Dr. Nadir Ali, how to measure your metabolic health, insulin sensitivity versus insulin resistance. You can get a little surrogate markers of insulin resistance by just looking at a cholesterol profile. Like let's say you have one of your uh, listeners listening in and they pull up your cholesterol profile and they're looking at their triglycerides and their HDL. If their triglycerides are low, which is fat and blood, and if their HDL is high, that means that they are insulin sensitive. If their triglycerides are high and their HDL is low, that means that they are potentially insulin resistant. Insulin is a key factor not only in controlling your blood sugar, but in also controlling the lipid metabolism. So the health of your fat cells how much fat you can pack into your fat cells, how much fat is released from the fat cells is also an important aspect of insulin. So it is important for a physician to recognize how insulin resistant that person is. So in simple terms, let's say you have a normal sugar of about 90 to 100. And if you are needing about four or five of insulin, that means that you need a low amount of insulin to hold your sugar there. On the other hand, to hold a normal sugar of 90, if you need 10, 15, 20, or higher insulin, that means you are insulin resistant because it's taking a lot higher insulin to keep your sugar levels in control, which is what most Americans are. So in other words, if you looked at insulin resistant in American population, the prevalence of resistance is perhaps three in four. 75% of Americans need more insulin to keep their sugars in control. What threshold would you say would be a fasted insulin level that you would, be, that you would say would, would be indicative of insulin resistance? I would say that if your HOMA score is above one and consistently above one. Now, insulin is a cyclical agent. In other words, the body releases insulin at baseline. Let's say you're fasting. Yeah. And the body doesn't release insulin constantly. It releases every 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, it goes up and then it comes down. So it's a cyclical release of insulin. And the cyclical release of a hormone or a pulsatile release of a hormone is very important to prevent resistance of that hormone. Our biology is designed like that. So within a degree of variability, in other words, like let's say if I take you and I check you at the peak of your pulse, you may be 10. And if I check you at the nadir of your pulse, that's the lowest of your pulse, you might be two or three. Yeah. But I would say as a rule for health, you should aim for a HOMA score. Uh, 100 of insulin, and I mean, 100 of sugar and about four or five of insulin. That's a HOMA score of one. It's probably a person who is insulin sensitive. Now, that's only one marker of insulin sensitivity. Another marker would be the health of your fat cells. Because eating food is a stressful event for the body. And the reason it's a stressful event is because our body needs to keep a level of sugar within a certain narrow physiologic range. It needs to keep the levels of fat in a narrow physiologic range. It needs to take the protein that you have eaten and dispose of the amino acids into new protein, new muscle, or use it for fuel. So the body cannot vary the levels of sugar too much whereas we eat a, a huge amount of meal. A standard American may eat about 400 grams of carbs in one setting. So the body needs to pack the carbs. It needs to pack the fat. So the fat that you have eaten, the body takes that fat, it puts it into these uh, fat globules called chylomicrons. They circulate in the bloodstream and they are cleared and packed into the fat cells in less than five minutes by insulin. Insulin has to activate an enzyme in your fat cells to do that. Now, if your fat cells are unhealthy, if they are overstuffed, 
then the fat remains in the circulation for too long because the fat cells say, hey, we are already too full. We can't take any more fat. And we want to become insulin resistant to protect ourselves. So the body starts over making insulin to pack more fat into the fat cells. And that is an important aspect for any physician who is treating chronic diseases to recognize that, hey, I want to check this person, not just from a cholesterol standpoint, but I want to check them and see if they have too high an insulin. Are their fat cells healthy? Because high insulin will increase your blood pressure, will cause uh, gout, will cause many other chronic ailments. And that's where our role is. That's where our role is in terms of educating the public to improve their health, not through medicines, but through a combination of diet, intermittent fasting, and exercise. You can use surrogate markers for insulin resistance. If your blood work shows that triglycerides are low and HDL is high, then you are insulin sensitive, which means you're in good metabolic health. Insulin is a key factor in health. It's used in controlling blood sugar and controlling lipid metabolism. How much fat can store in fat cells and how much fat is released? For example, you are okay if your blood sugar at 100 and you only require four units of insulin to maintain that level. But... If you require 15 or more units of insulin, you are most likely insulin resistant. 75% of Americans are insulin resistant. The question is, what HOMA IR score shows insulin resistance? Dr. Ali replies, if it's consistently above one, the body releases insulin in cycles. This prevents resistance. You should aim for a score of 1, which is if glucose is at 100 and your insulin is at 4 or below. Eating food is a stressful event for the body because it needs to keep your sugar in a narrow range, your fat in a narrow range, and it needs to convert protein into muscle or fuel. However, a standard American may eat as much as 400 grams of carbs. The body needs to pack the carbs and fat using chylomicrons to transport to the fat cells in less than five minutes using insulin. If the fat cells are unhealthy, the chylomicrons cannot pack into them. So they keep circulating in the blood then the cells begin resisting the insulin, thus becoming insulin resistant. Your physician should check your insulin level because high insulin can cause high blood pressure, gout, and many other chronic ailments. Physicians should improve health not through medicines, but through education on proper diet, intermittent fasting, and exercise.